Meantime, negotiations for Greece's third bailout will help avert the country's potential exit from the Eurozone. CCTV's Jack Barton has details from the European... It was a long night for everyone, but after 17 hours of reportedly volatile talks between Eurozone leaders, there was an agreement there would be no Grexit. Someone can say we have an agreement. Leaders have agreed in principle that they are ready to start negotiations on an ESM programme. ESM is the European stability mechanism, the bloc's permanent bailout fund. But the agreement is simply to begin formal negotiations on new rescue loans. It's a good step to rebuild confidence and uh, there will be many more steps. First, the Greek parliament must approve tougher creditor demands on pension and labour market reforms, as well as the creation of a fund, tasked with privatising 50 billion euros of state assets. That money will help bail out Greek banks and service the country's debts. Against Greek wishes, the International Monetary Fund would also be involved in another bailout. In return, Greece may be given rescue funding and perhaps limited debt restructuring, but no outright givenness. The Eurogroup is, Euro is ready, if necessary, to grant a longer grace period and longer loan maturities. We talked about it after the first successful review of the new Greek program. Greece's Prime Minister tried to sound upbeat about agreeing to measures more severe than the ones he'd campaigned to reject. The great majority of Greek people will support this effort to return to growth as they will recognize that we fought a righteous battle to the end. But will Greece be better off? Now we have two problems. A small problem is that the reforms have to be put in place. And a second, long-term problem is whether they are enough to make Greece competitive. I doubt that. And there is a growing sense the European project has been damaged by the years of foot-dragging and doubts surrounding the future of Greece. After all, the country has only 11 million people and accounts for less than 3% of Eurozone GDP, which raises the awkward question, what would happen if economic disaster struck a much larger troubled Eurozone economy like Italy? Jack Barton, CCTV, Brussels.